Well, welcome, friends. This is our first... Hold on. 2785. Anyway, we're doing our first flight post SU-6. System Update 6 came out. Uh, reviews have been pretty good, but I'm this is my first flight, so I am fully anticipating a, a crash to desk drop. We're, we took off from Albuquerque 25 minutes, 57 seconds ago, headed to Amarillo, Texas, K-A-M-A, -A, Rick Husband International Airport, named after the brave commander of the space shuttle Columbia that disintegrated in the atmosphere on re-entry. Really sad story. But we're hoping that we have a happy story here with a successful flight approach and landing at Amarillo. A couple things that have changed. Look up here. Watch what happens. They fix that. Menu bar disappears again. Also, the switch from FMS to man on the speed control here is now a click instead of a mouse wheel. That took me about three minutes to figure out, staring at the uh, instrument panel. There's also now uh, master caution alarms that have never I've not heard in the longitude before. It's pretty sensitive on the ITT, I, uh, interstage turbine temperature. I got a uh, oh look at the look at the uh, wind generators. I got an ITT master caution alarm on takeoff. I guess I put a little too much energy into that throttle. But I'm hoping that we don't have a crash to desktop. As I said, the reviews have been pretty good. The sky looks amazing. The uh, night lighting has also been addressed. Been a little less dramatic. Local time uh, as we approach uh, Amarillo is 7:11 uh, p.m. Expecting to be on the ground in about 13 minutes. If <laughs> we don't crash to this time, let's load to 285. Betty says the nearest altimeter is 3017. Let's see if that's right. 3017, spot on. We're descending to 6,100 feet at 1,800 feet per minute. We're 17,000 feet right now for 6,100 per ATC instructions. We are approaching runway 13, the RNAV 13 Zulu. Runway length 7,900 feet, airport elevation 3,607. Approach course is 129. We'll enter that now. That's a uh, point of reference for us. Hopefully we need it. They don't end up on the desktop. Um, minimums are 3976. You know, on the last update, if I entered the minimums, I lost my wind data. Let's see if that happens. Only one way to find out. Barometric minimums, 3976. And we lost our wind data. <laughs> well, that's a... Yeah, we're stuck now. Shoot. Well, okay. That's a, something to uh, be aware of. PFD option two. Off? What if I re Nope. Lost our wind data. Shit. Well, most recent METAR. Boy, the skies look pretty, don't they? Most recent METAR at Amarillo shows, last I checked, let's just get a current update. K-A-M-A, M-E-T-A-R, METAR. It shows winds out of the southeast. Well, we're landing on runway 13, so that's great. 2115, says the rear whiskey. So anyway, we're 38 miles out now and uh, at uh, 13,400 feet, functional equivalent 10,000 feet. Our altitude's okay, but we're going to keep slowing down now as we close in on 
10,000 feet. Want to be 250 knots indicated. 3017, still the um, altimeter. Winds are southeast, so landing on runway 13 is, should be perfect. We're, we're not going to have any wind data here on the PFD, unfortunately. And that is unfortunate, because life is easier when you can get live wind data from the PFD. Screens are a little bright as it's turning from day to night here, so we'll turn on our PFD brightness and our MFD brightness. That's better. Hopefully things work. 11,500 feet, let's load it 260. See those, those uh, wind turbines down there? See they're actually spinning? Pretty amazing. I really hope that my information is correct in terms of everything I've been reading. Let's load it 250. Uh, that it's pretty stable and uh, they've made some pretty good improvements. Time will tell here pretty soon. And you slowing. It's 28 miles out now, and we're doing 240 knots, so we do need to uh, hit the brakes here a little bit and use our speed brakes. And we'll slow us down here to 200. Landing gear. Landing gear. Speed brakes, you can see them actually deployed if we don't crash the desktop. Here they are, see? Continue slowing. Haven't done an actual night landing in some time. There's one thing about speed brakes, though. You don't want to forget that they're deployed. That can be uh, a little hairy. There we go. Here's our approach. We're approaching uh, RNAV-13 via the um, JETIM transition. 6,100 feet at JETIM, 4,900 feet at PAN, P-A-H-N-N, uh, 4,600 feet at SISBE, S-S-B-E-E, -E, and 6, S-I-I-X-X. -X. Very short final, just three miles. Mountainous terrain in the area. Not hugely mountainous, but mountainous. Continue slowing. As we close in here on Amarillo, Texas. Hopefully close in. A little trouble slowing down here, so let's shallow out our descent rate slightly. We're at 7,900 feet and 20 miles out, so we're not too high. Let's shallow out to 1,000 feet per minute. That'll help us slow down. Probably don't need the speed brakes, but now 21 miles out, 7,600 feet, 200 knots, setting at 190. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Still having a little trouble slowing down here, so we're going to use our speed brakes, disconnect the auto throttle so it stops trying to fight us. Slow to 180 on the auto throttle and manually slow us down here. There we go. Throttle control. There we go. Now we'll re engage the auto throttle and bring in the speed brakes. It's a little aggressive on the speed. We were at 180, and now it's gunned us back up to 190. Let's continue slowing. Just have to compensate for that on our speed settings. Get our landing lights on. Turn down the floodlights in the cockpit. And depressurize. Safe altitude for depressurization prior to landing. Set our speed at 170. Night lights look good. Night lighting looks really good. Amarillo approach Cessna and Tree Bravo Whiskey. Cancel IFR at this time. Uh-oh. Why is it doing that? This has happened a couple of times in the past. Zoom in on the MFD. We're down at 6,100 feet as instructed, so... Let's do a notch of flaps. Passenger view. Only one passenger on this flight. 
Okay, we got our squawk code. Zoom in on the MFD again. Down to three. Thirteen miles out. We'll slow to one six five. Okay, well, I'd like to land. How about that? Let's see if the AI ATC handles that itself or if I need to end up actually requesting it. Radio altimeter showing 2456 above ground level at 6100 feet. We know we don't have to be at 4900 feet until PON, which I show as only 1 minute 15 seconds. So I'm going to continue the descent. Since I'm VFR anyway, I'm allowed to. If I don't have, hear the AI ask for landing clearance, I'll do it myself. 165. 10 miles out, so we'll slow to 160. It's a very short final. Again, I don't know why I do this to myself. We'll go outside. Looks beautiful. Put our gear down. There's the airport right there. Okay, we'll put our uh, another notch of flaps down. Wow, that looks fantastic. Slow to one, four, two is our approach speed. And we'll do full flaps. All right, gang, we have full flaps, gear down. Landing lights on and we're depressurized. Increase our descent rate because we're coming up on pond right now. We're going to be no lower than 4,900 feet. We're at 55, so we're a little high. It's an RNAV approach. Whether we actually get any cooperation in that regard is another matter. Making that right turn for our very short final. Not hearing us ask for landing clearance. So let's do it. Amarillo Tower, Cessna, November 343, Bravo Whiskey is six miles northwest, 5,300 feet with whiskey to land. Your speed's good. There's the runway right there. Three One zero five, and it's winds out of the southeast. That's good news. Shallow outer descent right now. I see red on the red on the poppies. We're level at forty nine hundred feet now. Keeping an eye on those poppies right there. Those four red lights. Two two. It's gusting to two two really. Cleared land one three. He says three whiskey. And we're going to pop up in our seat, disconnect the auto throttle. Fingers crossed, gang. Let's hope we don't drop to the desktop. Reconfirm. Full flaps. Runway 13. Course is correct. 129. There's the runway. I see two whites, two reds. Autopilot. And flying. I have the airplane. That's the ITT Master Caution Alarm. It seems pretty sensitive, if you ask me, but... At four whites, please, now is the worst time to crash, crash to the desktop. I mean, there's never a good time, but... Certainly I'm not when you're on final. The runway in sight. Got four whites on the poppy, so we're coming in a little high. Winds should be cooperative if the... I mean, it's, it's basically coming at us, but I'm feeling a little bit of a pull to the right. Trying to get some reds on those poppies. There we go. Definitely feeling the winds. It's definitely windy. Not necessarily a crosswind, but just kind of windy. 7,900 foot run, long runway. Still fighting to get those reds back. 500. 500. There we go. Cars on that highway look good. There we go, two and two. Their speed's all right. A little low, a little low, but safe. Two and two on the poppies. Now one and three. Now back to two and two.
Alright gang, there it goes. First night landing. Spoilers are out. Versers on. At 65 knots. I'm gonna exit right. Well, welcome to Amarillo. Local time, 724. So we got an exit coming up here on the right. Tap those brakes a little bit. Will do. There it is. Yeah, it is windy. I wish we had wind date. I will not be entering Barrow Minnens anymore. I would like to be I would like to know what my winds are. There we go. Alright, friends. Look at that sunset. been a hell of a week, friends. I needed a flight. One, two, one decimal niner for Cessna Tree Bravo Whiskey. Okay. Ground, Cessna November Tree for Tree parking Bravo break. Whiskey, taxi to parking. Cessna November Tree for you hear that chime? Whiskey, it's because the parking brake's on. Bring in the spoilers. Down they come. Using taxiway Charlie Alpha Bravo Back inside. Flaps in. Let's look the other side. Now yeah, they're in. Flaps retracted. Back up front. Parking brake released. Contact ground. Go back to clearance. Contact ground. All right. Well, we're not getting any help from ground. <laughs> Okay, that's all right. Um, left and right landing lights are off. Taxis on. Pulse lights off. Wing inspection light off. And we'll stop our timer. 42 minutes. Okay, friends. Um, it's a little weird that we didn't get any help from ground. I don't know if that's a, an issue. We'll see. And also a little strange that it canceled IFR on us. That has happened to me a couple of times before. Seems to be related to AIATC, which I enable, just because it's a little less work. But not the other world. You just have to follow up and get clearance to land VFR. That is one beautiful plane. I really hope that SU-6 heralds a um, era of stability, but I probably shouldn't say that. Just the mere utterance of that word could probably cause it to crash the desktop. Where they tell us the taxi via what? Kilo? Charlie Alpha Bravo? Hmm. Okay, well, we're on taxi with Kilo right now. I don't know if it's got incorrect taxi markings. It's not. This is not Charlie. This is Kilo on the real airport. I would think it'd be Kilo Papa. That's what the real airport taxiways are. But anyway, let's get parked and find a nice place to stay in Amarillo. I am thinking if this, in fact, is an era of new stability, of implementing my contiguous state tour. That is flying from one state to another, all 50, that touch each other on a border, which obviously implies shorter flights, which I'm down for until I know that the sim is stable, which I still don't know. I did take the... I had a choice between runway 13 and runway 22. I liked runway 22 because it's like 13,000 feet long. But the winds were out of the south and the, the uh, crosswind was 50 knots difference. 50 degrees difference, rather. If I landed on runway 22 and only 40 
not knots, degrees difference if I landed on one three. So anything you can do to minimize a crosswind. But it actually worked out great because the winds during our flight shifted from south to southeast. So that was a lucky break. I'm hanging left here on what I know to be Papa, but the sim seems to think is Alpha, taxiway Alpha. Basically parallel to our runway. We just landed off to the right right here. I can't tell you how happy I am that the menu bar is no longer staying on all the time. Oh, I almost forgot another huge development, potentially, if, if, it's, if it wasn't just a one-off. Um, it doesn't wobble anymore. There's no roll oscillation uh, at cruise. And that's a really nice fix because that's a big pain in the butt when that happened. I mean, I've been dealing with it. They, it was originally in the first release, then they fixed it, then they reintroduced it, and they just didn't ever fix it in SU after SU. Uh, but it was not present on this flight, that's all I can tell you. All right, we got our uh, parking space. I, I would it has to be off to the left, just looking at an airport diagram. Beautiful sky, look at that sky, holy mackerel. Gorgeous. All right, here's a left turn. Looks like it's kind of tight. I'm ready to use a little toe brake. We're boogieing along here at over 20 knots, so. There we go. Ooh, double. There you go. You have full rudder deflection, but it just doesn't turn that sharp at these slow speeds. You don't have a lot of rudder authority. Taxi light looks great. In fact, the airplane lighting looks great. See the uh, wingtip light, red here, green there. Taxi's nice and bright. Tail flood light is on now by default. Ah, they still haven't taken the lights out of the center line. That's funny. There's our parking space. Okay, let's get parked. 7.30 at night, I'm hungry, right? 5.30 here in Southern California. All right. Here's our space. Nice, straight in, nice and straight in. See if our flashlight guy's apparent. Anybody see a flashlight guy? There he is. Bingo. Well, okay, friends. This was great. Oh, I should have turned the taxi light off, the poor guy. I need sunglasses, 7.30 at night. There we go. Anyway, welcome, my friends, to Amarillo, Texas. Beautiful flight, stable. That's what counts, friends. That's what counts. All right, let's... Um, oh, you know, I don't think I ever turned on my pedostatic. Boy, I'm glad there was no weather along the way. God, i got to be better with my checklists. All right, let's... Um, see what happens. Let's kill the remaining lights. And you see I turned off the tail flood light, but... Oh! Oh, I'll be damned! My last flight, before SU-6... Where the hell did it go? Just now, you know, it's got me curious. Well... Well, we'll figure it out. Anyway... Huh. Okay. Um, let's uh, kill that right engine. Whoops. And let's kill the left engine and see if we still drop to the... Oh, good. See, here the here the uh, master caution, oil pressure. And now do the left. We can should be able to acknowledge that. Nope. Okay. And it goes to the desktop. Oh, my logbook's gone. <laughs> Luckily, it still has my hours. 478. 
And I got... Oh, where's the landing classification? It classified as a day takeoff. 39 minutes, 16 second flight, but it didn't give it a landing classification. Well, that's damn peculiar. Was it because I took off IFR and landed VFR? Hmm. Well, that's a minor mystery. I'm not going to cry about that. I don't like the fact that it's apparently not going to credit me. Well, it's showing a KBQ to KMA AMA, but I didn't get any night landing credit, damn it. That should say 48, not 47. Son of a bitch. Anyway, thanks for joining us. Hope everybody's doing okay. I really hope everybody's doing okay. And, uh, you know, try to focus on... If you have a bad week, try to focus on things that aren't bad. There's always stuff, something in your life that isn't bad, right? Whatever makes you think of other things can be helpful. So I hope everybody's having a, a good day, and um, we'll look forward to another flight. Hopefully we have continued stability and can... Uh, and resume enjoying flight sim after uh, after SU6. Take care, everybody.